For hundreds of years many ships of different types sailed the seas and their safety depended upon their own skills. Signaling methods were by flag end. Letters passed from ship to ship. Distress alerting was by firing a gun, or pyrotechnics, and only succeeded when other ships were in sight or when close to inhabited land. Early evolution of maritime radio. 1895, the invention of radio, spark transmitters and morse. 1899, the first incident of radio being used to report a distress at sea. A light ship equipped by Marconi reported the grounding of the steamer Elba. 1910, the first SA station on the bluff in Durban with a 3 kW spark transmitter for ship slash shore communications. 1912, the Titanic disaster and the saving of 700 lives due to the watchkeeping of the Carpathia. 1914, the first international convention for the safety of life at sea, Salas, adopted. Further developments. 1929, second Salas convention with stricter watchkeeping requirements and the advent of the first fully automatic alarm system. The 1974 Salas agreement dealt in detail with distress and safety and the first suggestions of using satellite communications were evolved. The 1974 Salas agreement was amended in 1981 and 1984 and finally in 1992 to provide for the Global Maritime Distress and Safety System, GMDSS. GMDSS Plan GMDSS emphasis the ability to alert search and rescue authorities ashore as well as shipping in the area to achieve a rapid response. Shore bases authorities now have the primary role of coordinating assistance following a distress alert. Worldwide communication coverage of the GMDSS is achieved by a combination of satellite and terrestrial radio systems. Ship's equipment is determined by the ocean area in which it sails and not by size, type, number of passengers, etc. About GMDSS Global Maritime Distress and Safety System. According to IMO, 1999. The GMDSS represents a worldwide network of automated emergency communications for ships at sea. SALAS Convention Chapter 4 states that all ocean-going passenger ships and cargo ships of 300 gross tonnage and upwards are required to carry radio equipment that conforms to international standards. The main purpose of GMDSS is to prevent unanswered distress calls and delay in search and rescue actions when distress situations occur. GMDSS ensures that any emergency at sea will result in a distress call and the response to that call will be immediate and effective. IMO, Shipping Emergencies, Search and Rescue and the GMDSS, March 1999. The Salas Convention Chapter 4 Radio Communication, Regulation 7 Radio Equipment, General, lists all radio equipment required on board the vessels. GMDSS consists of Digital Selective Calling, DSC, a standard for sending predefined digital messages from ship to ship, ship to shore and shore to ship. Navtex, an international automated service for delivery of navigational and meteorological warnings, forecasts, and urgent maritime safety information to ships. Emergency Position Indicator Radio Beacon, EPRB, Automated Identification and Locator Device for Search and Rescue Operations. Search and Rescue Locating Equipment, automatically leading search and rescue units to the position of distress by signaling search and rescue radar transponders. In Marsat, a global mobile satellite communication system providing two-way data and messaging. DSC is considered the automated watch on distress channels running on VHF, MF slash HF radios. The satellite communication is based on satellite network that reaches up to sea area A3. Emergency position indicating radio beacons, EPRB, and search and research transponders, SART, 
are sending out distress and locating signals under emergencies. EFRBs are small portable devices using the global COSPAS SARSIT satellite system and sending signals on the 406 MHz frequency, whereas the SART devices are portable radar transponders operating on the radar X and S frequency bands. The search and rescue transponders can stay afloat when a ship has sunk and are also used on lifeboats. EFRB automatically send distress signals when coming in contact with water. The GMDSS operates over four sea areas of coverage from shore to ship. The four sea areas are classified as A1, A2, A3, and A4. Sea Area A1, covered by VHF radio enabling digital selective calling, DSC, and radio telephone, RT. Determined range of approximately 20 to 30 nautical miles. Sea Area A2, covered by MF radio also enabling DSC and RT determined range up to 150 nautical miles. Sea Area A3, covered by HF radio and in Marsat geostationary satellite enabling DSC and satellite communication 70 degrees north and below 70 degrees south. Sea Area A4, categorized as the polar regions above 70 degrees north and below 70 degrees south. This area requires HF radio with DSC. The four C areas in the GMDSS framework use different equipment in the respective area. They are as follows. Area range equipment. A 120 to 50 MVHF DSC. A 250 to 400 MVHF plus MF. A 370 degrees north to 70 degrees south VHF plus MF plus satellite. A 4 above 70 degrees north or SHF plus MF plus VHF. The different types of equipment operate in different frequencies in a specific band. MF, medium frequencies, 300 kHz to 3 MHz. HF, high frequencies, 3 MHz to 30 MHz. VHF, very high frequencies, 30 MHz to 300 MHz. Very high frequencies, VHF. For the purposes of maritime communication, the range of 156 MHz to 174 MHz is allocated. Channel 16, which is set at 156.800 MHz, is for distress, urgency, and safety communication. Channel 70, which is set at 156.525 MHz, is for routine VHF DSC. Digital Selective Calling, Watch. Communication channels are set put above and below channel 16 to avoid any interference on channel 16. GMDSSC Areas C Area A1 Within VHF range of at least one VHF DSC Coast Station, approximate 30 to 50 nautical miles C area A2, within MF, 2 MHz, range of at least 1 MF. DSC Coast Station, approximate 150 miles. C area A3, within the Inmarsat area of coverage and outside area A1 and 2. C area A4, outside areas A1, 2, and 3, comprises mainly high latitude, GMDSS Functional Requirements Transmission of ship to shore distress alerts by at least two Independent means Reception of shore to ship distress alerts Transmission and reception of Ship to ship distress alerts Search and rescue communications Unseen communications Signals used for location Maritime safety information General radio communications to and from the shore. Bridge to bridge communications. Radio watchkeeping is automatic. Subsequent distress and safety communications are carried out on radio telephone or radio telex. GMDSS consists of a number of subsystems.
Digital Selective Calling System, Radio Base, Satellite Communication Systems, Maritime Safety Information Systems, NAVTEX and Safety Net, the Emergency Position Indication Radio Beacon System, EPIRB. The Search and Rescue Transponder, SAR, System. Channel 9, the primary calling channel. Establish contact on this channel and move to a working channel as soon as possible. Channel 16, Emergency and Distress Calls Only. Channel 22A, restricted to USCG use only. If you establish contact with the USCG on channel 9 or 16, they may ask you to switch to channel 22A. You may also hear an announcement on channel 16 to switch to channel 22A for important information. Channel 13, bridge to bridge communications between vessels. Also used to request bridge openings. Ships less than 65 feet in length maintain a listening watch on this channel in U.S. waters. This is a good channel to listen to in periods of poor visibility so that you can communicate with ferries, freighters, and other large vessels. You must use the low power on your radio when broadcasting on channel 13. Channel 68, 69, 71, 72, 78A, Working Channels. The only channels available to non-commercial vessels for ship-to-ship -ship and ship-to-shore communications. Although you may have many other channels on your radio, each of them is restricted to specific uses. In the 1980s, Agencies including the International Telecommunications Union and the International Maritime Organization collaborated on the development of a global search and rescue plan based on a combination of satellite and terrestrial radio services. Called the Global Maritime Distress and Safety System, it changed international distress communications from being primarily a system of ship-to-ship -ship communications to a ship-to-shore communication system. It spelled the end of Morse code communications for all but a few users, primarily amateur radio operators. GMDSS relies upon the establishment of specific sea areas and redundant distress communication systems. It required the installation of upgraded suites of communications equipment on board vessels and at shore-based telecommunication centers. The GMDSS provides for the automatic identification of the caller and the location of a vessel in distress. It went into effect aboard commercial ships in 1999. For these vessels, the GMDSS system is compulsory. Recreational boats are termed voluntary vessels because they can choose whether or not to carry GMDSS compliant equipment. Rescue authorities strongly encourage them to do so. The GMDSS established mechanisms for issuing automatic distress alerts even in cases where a radio operator doesn't have time to send an SOS or a Mayday call. It requires ships to be capable of receiving broadcasts of maritime safety information in an effort to prevent marine emergencies from occurring in the first place. GMDSS mandates nine specific functions that compulsory ships must be capable of performing. Transmitting ship-to-shore distress alerts by at least two independent and separate means. Transmitting and receiving ship-to-ship -ship distress alerts. Receiving shore-to-ship distress communications. Transmitting and receiving search and rescue coordination communications. Transmitting and receiving on-scene communications. Transmitting and receiving locating signals. Transmitting and receiving maritime safety information. Transmitting and receiving general radio communications, whether ship to ship or ship to shore. Transmitting and receiving bridge to bridge communications. need for satellite communication. We know that there are different ways to communicate, and the propagation of these waves can occur in different ways. 
Ground wave propagation and sky wave propagation are the two ways communication takes place for a certain distance. The maximum distance covered by them is 1,500 kilometers, which was overcome by the introduction of satellite communication. How satellite communications work? The communication satellites are similar to the space mirrors that help us bounce signals such as radio, internet data, and television from one side of the Earth to another. Three stages are involved, which explain the working of satellite communications. These are uplink, transponders, downlink. Let's consider an example of signals from a television. In the first stage, the signal from the television broadcast on the other side of the Earth is first beamed up to the satellite from the ground station on the Earth. This process is known as uplink. The second stage involves transponders such as radio receivers, amplifiers, and transmitters. These transponders boost the incoming signal and change its frequency so that the outgoing signals are not altered. Depending on the incoming signal sources, the transponders vary. The final stage involves a downlink in which the data is sent to the other end of the receiver on the Earth. It is important to understand that usually, there is one uplink and multiple downlink. What is satellite communication? Satellite communication is transporting information from one place to another using a communication satellite in orbit around the Earth. Watching the English Premier League every weekend with your friends would have been impossible without this. A communication satellite is an artificial satellite that transmits the signal via a transponder by creating a channel between the transmitter and the receiver at different Earth locations. Telephone, radio, television, internet, and military applications use satellite communications. Believe it or not, more than 2,000 artificial satellites are hurtling around in space above your heads. A communication satellite is an artificial satellite that transmits the signal via a transponder by creating a channel between the transmitter and the receiver at different Earth locations. Telephone, radio, television, internet, and military applications use satellite communications. Satellite communication. A body moving in an orbit around a planet is called a satellite. Moon is the natural satellite of the Earth. Artificial satellites are launched from the Earth for communication purpose and weather monitoring. These artificial satellites also orbit around the Earth in their own orbit. Let's see how the signals are transformed. After the artificial satellite is put into its orbit around the Earth, it starts to function. The signals are transferred to the satellite using the transmitter or uplink, and the satellite transforms the signal to the receiver or downlink. The time period for one complete orbital motion of an artificial satellite is equal to the time period of the Earth's one complete rotation. When an artificial satellite's orbit lies directly